Written in a six-week period of feverish activity in 1961, Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth is a modern classic. In one sense, The Wretched of the Earth has had limited significance for the study of politics and international relations if the contents of introductory texts are indicative of the significance attached to Fanon's writing. But from a post-colonial perspective, The Wretched of the Earth is a seminal work that enables us to understand the process of decolonization. Its interrogation of colonialism, power, and political violence resonates beyond the context in which it was written. From the perspective of politics and international relations, the Wretched of the Earth foregrounds concepts central to understanding contemporary global processes. Fanon's starting point is that the colonial world is the Maniacan world, that is, a binary division between good and evil. Whereas colonialism is frequently erased from conventional narratives of the construction of international society, for Fanon, colonialism is neither accidental, this is a sentiment widely shared and wittily expressed in Robert Seeley's famous statement concerning the British Empire. Seeley wrote, We seem, as it were, to have conquered half the world in a fit of absent of mind. Nor, for Fanon, is colonialism irrelevant to the creation of modern structures of power. As he writes, the colonial context is characterized by the dichotomy it inflicts on the world. For Fanon, decolonization is not simply a juridical concept. He highlights the totalizing effects of colonialism and the necessity for the colonized to overcome the alienation produced by colonial oppression and to create a national culture since, as he says, the sweeping, leveling nature of colonial domination was quick to dislocate in spectacular fashion the cultural life of a conquered people. While conventional international relations theory is as race blind as it is gender blind, Fanon situates race at the center of his analysis. He notes that the colonial world is a compartmentalized world and he situates racial ordering at the center of this worldview. As Fanon writes, looking at the immediacies of the colonial context, it is clear that what divides this world is first and foremost what species, what race one belongs to. In the colonies, the economic infrastructure is also a superstructure. The cause is effect. You are rich because you are white. You are white because you are rich. Fanon's approach to violence is frequently misunderstood and he's often portrayed as an apologist for political violence. However, Fanon's arguments in support of violent revolutionary struggle are drawn from his analysis of the central and inescapable role of violence in the maintenance of colonialism. As he says, the col colonized subject discovers reality and transforms it through his praxis, his deployment of violence, and his agenda for liberation. Ascertaining this legacy of the wretched of the earth for contemporary politics is a deeply problematic enterprise. Fanon's text spoke to a specific historical situation and many aspects of his analysis, for example of the Cold War, appear outdated today. Nevertheless, the book is not some historical curiosity and central ideas do speak to the current age. Now I would like to highlight three themes in the book of relevance to contemporary political praxis. While the term third world used by Fanon is no longer fashionable, the global economic exploitation at the heart of capitalism and imperialism resonates as strongly today as it did in 1961. Fanon argued that colonialism led to the systematic underdevelopment of countries in the third world and this structural inequality would not be altered simply by the fact of independence and formal sovereignty. Furthermore, his prescient analysis of the role of the nationalist bourgeoisie in perpetuating colonial patterns of dominance after independence remains valid today. From a Fanonist perspective, continuing poverty and growing inequality is not simply the result of structural constraints. It also arises from the failure of the bourgeoisie which, as Fanon writes, after independence, reduced in number, lacking capital, and rejecting the road to revolution, stagnates miserably. 
Secondly, Hannan's emphasis on the cultural impact of colonialism is replicated in the contemporary struggles of indigenous peoples around the world. Fanon was acutely aware of the importance of place in his account of national culture, and thus while there are significant differences among indigenous peoples in the specific environment of distinct settler societies, he provides a lens through which to analyse their opposition to dispossession and disempowerment wrought by colonialism. Thirdly, the upsurge in what may be termed the politics of public monuments noticeable in settler colonial states such as Australia, the Republic of South Africa, and the United States of America recall Fanon's arguments in The Wretched of the Earth. He writes, a world compartmentalized, Manichaean and petrified, a world of statues. The statue of the general who led the conquest, the statue of the engineer who built the bridge, a world cocksure of itself, crushing with its stoniness the backbones of those scarred by the whip. Arguably, the most concentrated attention given to the wretched of the earth concerns Fanon's discussion of violence. Contrary to the dominant position in Western political theory, for example in the works of Machiavelli or Hobbes, which views politics in instrumental terms with violence a key component of power, for Fanon, violence has a dual relationship with power. For him, violence is inscribed in the relationship between oppressor and oppressed. From this perspective, on one hand, violence is a necessary instrument in revolutionary politics. It is an instrument for attaining political power since violence was introduced into colonial society by the colonialists, and decolonization can only be achieved through reclaiming and using violence. Simply put, decolonization is always a violent event. On the other hand, violence has an existential component and is central to the realization of the anti-colonial subject. In this sense, violence is a cleansing force that strips away the inferiority of the colonial subject. For Fanon, the colonized man liberates himself in and through violence. In The Wretched of the Earth, Fanon presents a critique of a colonial order based on racial hierarchies and violence. His analysis of a post-independent social order dominated by nationalist elites and shallow party politics was remarkably accurate in predicting the malaise of political order in post-independent African states. For Fanon, stability requires an end to economic exploitation and the forging of new forms of national consciousness. Underpinning the arguments of the wretched of the earth is a commitment to a radical humanism as the basis for a just society. His is a commitment to a society in which every human being is recognized to be of worth. In the conclusion to the book, Fanon argues that, and I quote, man's condition, his projects and collaboration with others on tasks that strengthen man's totality are new issues that require genuine inspiration. But this transformation can only occur by resisting the example bequeathed by Europe.